Right now, there are air quality alerts across the Northeast as smoke from those massive wildfires in Canada spread once again over parts of the U.S. New York City currently ranked the second worst major city in the world for air quality, followed by Washington, D.C. in fifth. Now, Chicago is seventh, and if you are hoping this will all go away soon, I wish we had better news for you. More than 3,000 wildfires have burned in Canada. They are not expected to be put out anytime soon until after summer ends. So when it goes away, it could come back and put a wrench in your summer plans, certainly. Michael Mehta joins us now, Professor of Geography and Environmental Studies at Thompson Rivers University in British Columbia. A professor, uh, my family's from BC. It's great to see you. I wish it were under better circumstances. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Natasha. It's fantastic to be here, too. I, I think so many of us think, you know, oh, it's just wildfire smoke. It's just burning wood. I've been around a campfire before. But what do people need to know about formaldehyde and benzene and what's really in this haze? Yeah, so wood smoke is actually one of the most toxic cocktails that you can expose yourself to. There's more than 200 chemicals in it that we know are carcinogenic. And a lot of those chemicals... Uh, can have both short-term and long-term effects. We're just starting to realize as more studies emerge about wildfires in particular, how bad these things can be for our lung health, our cardiac health, for cancer, obviously, and a range of other things, including diabetes. So this is a, uh, an issue that is still emerging, and uh, unfortunately, you're correct. You probably will have a lot more smoke coming your way over the summer, although maybe not this weekend. Why are we seeing this explosion of fires in Canada this season? Well, with climate change and the drying of our forests, as well as some pretty horrible forest, practice, forest practices that have gone back uh, several decades, uh, we're seeing that uh, fires are becoming more commonplace. Currently, we have more than 500 in Canada, uh, 250 or so of those, half of them are considered out of control. And of course, they just are tapping our resources. We don't have the personnel. We don't have the aircraft uh, to put them out. And um, the further north you are, the, the more effects uh, climate change has. And of course, we have this massive forest called the boreal that runs almost all across our country. Help us understand why this is likely to go through the summer. Is it because some of these are so massive that they really just have to burn themselves out? What, what is the situation on the ground? Yeah, in part, uh, a lot of the fires will eventually have to burn themselves out. What's interesting is that uh, a lot of them will actually go dormant over the winter months and become what we call zombie fires. And they'll be active under the snow and come back again next spring. And uh, some of the fires that you probably have this year are the result of that. Lots of different things going on. Of course, in the States, you have the beginning of your fire season in many states, Florida in particular, Arizona and California. So you're going to see the coming together, so to speak, of the smoke from Canada and the U.S. creating this seemingly endless cycle of exposure. I've never heard of a zombie fire before. That is <laughs> horrifying. Um, Sounds like a good movie, doesn't it? <laughs> it's really not the news I needed today. Um, yeah. Did not realize that dormant fires could live under snow and then pop up again in, in the spring. Okay. Okay, how, how is the smoke traveling as far as Europe? And, and what is the latest that you're tracking right now? Who will see relief first? And then when will it get bad again? Well, there's a few interesting diagnostic tools that anybody could use online. The first is you could actually use uh, air quality sensor maps. And one that I use that uh, is from a Utah-based company is called Purple Air. So if you go to purpleair.com, you can actually see the actual levels across uh, the world, essentially, as well. And the other one I use is a Canadian one called firesmoke.ca, but there's an equivalent in the U.S. through NOAA, your atmospheric agency, which will show you how the smoke is moving. And what I'm seeing right now is looking at both the NOAA map and the fire smoke map in Canada is that the smoke has been working its way across the Atlantic. You can see it actually hitting parts of Europe like Portugal and Spain but also northern parts of Africa. But it is dissipating, it is disappearing. And if, if the maps are correct, the modeling is correct, you'll probably see a substantial reduction overnight tonight in many parts of the eastern United States. Okay, so that is some good news. Substantial reduction expected tonight in the eastern part, as you were just saying. But are you saying, Professor, that this is likely gonna be cyclical and just part of our lives in, in many American cities for the rest of the summer? Well, I'm not gonna say the rest of the summer. I'll probably say the rest of our lives, unfortunately. And um, it, it is something that has been predicted for decades going forward. We're gonna have to learn to live with it. We're gonna have to know how to protect ourselves, better filtration in our homes. And we're gonna have to uh, learn how to, to manage these fires more, more effectively.
Mm, okay. <laughs> Professor Michael Meta, I appreciate your time. Oh, sometimes everything just feels bad and it's really hard. But, um, but well, it's but, not so bad. You might, you might be clear this weekend. So that's, let's keep our fingers crossed. Let's, let's make hay and uh, while the sun is shining and, and enjoy this weekend. But, but there's a, a lot that needs to be done. Professor, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.